Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Symphonic Rain. If you missed the last episode, you can click on the eye in the top of the video to watch a previous episode to get caught up. Or tell. Sorry. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Natural ability. Hey, you're making fun of all the Fortel students. Is it Fortella? I feel like it's Fortella for some reason. Oh. Well. I mean, probably just kinetic learning. Eh. I understand. I basically understand what you're saying, Torda. But I don't think that's a good reason for for Tells to have it to pair with a voice student. Voice students can be solo, isn't that unfair? You explained it for me, but missed the point, and you were making fun of me. Why you gotta do that? Huh? What? Why? And? That's true. Yes. I actually don't, but okay. Yeah, I understand. I'll really look. Why can't I just choose you? Just like me, Torto was finished with her morning lesson. We always just parted ways after eating together here. Huh. Ooh, ask her, not today. Ask her! Or not today. Hmm. As ask her, why not? It really was a welcome offer. I think I'll take you up on that. Hmm. Right, but you have some ideas, right? You know what I lack? Yeah, okay. Huh? You led me out of the cafeteria to the hallway lined with practice rooms. The practice rooms along the hallway looked busy at this hour. There were almost no practice rooms with open doors. It wasn't rare for all the practice rooms to be full at this time on a Monday. It is Monday. It seemed that everyone believed that famous saying by some unknown music professor, neglect your instrument for one day, lose three days of skill. Is that how that work? You're not, but what if you're sick, like you're really sick? Of course there was no school on weekends, but hardly any students spent their only two days off playing around. That's how serious everyone was about music. But unfortunately, they had that had nothing to do with me. So, serious students spend their Saturdays and Sundays with no classes working away in the practice rooms from the morning on. It was common for the practice rooms to be full up. Students like Torda and myself who, would, who could practice at home were better off. Well, yeah, that'd be, you know, very nice to be able to do that. You couldn't sing at the top of your lungs, but it was considered part of the city's character and generally accepted. And there were certain instruments that could be muted. 
Really? Huh. Oh wait, no, that's right. When 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 they said muted, I was like, wait, you mean like, like, you know, quiet, like, a hundred percent quiet? But the largest number of students study the piano, and nothing could be done for string in instruments like that. Yeah, that's true. Which meant that students who couldn't practice at home or at school would flock to their practice rooms. Even Tota spent her days off practicing, unlike me. I could sense the work she put into all that practice. However, the fact that I can't follow her example, maybe it's a difference in personality. What are we doing here? Ask them? How? Torta peeked into the small window of a practice room as if she wasn't listening to me. Um... Ah. Eh. Hello. Male student came out after a bit, perhaps having noticed the noise. Well, well, Totinita. Konnichiwa. Ekume. He was being pretty forceful, but the student didn't seem to mind. In fact, he looked a little happy. Ah ha ha ha. So, what did you want? Tota turned to me with a smile and started to introduce me. I knew I needed to introduce myself at that point. But I just couldn't get up the spirit and instead merely nodded my head slightly to him. Chris? Uh, um, afternoon. Who? Oh, who's this guy? No, no, I should apologize. What happened? Chris? Sorry. I was the steering would turn me down. I knew though that more than half of the responsibility lay with my attitude. I just apologized before Tora said anything. It's not on purpose. It wasn't difficult to imagine what he thought of me, not even introducing myself properly and seeing the disinterested look on my face. Of course I knew that I was the one asking, but I didn't feel like it was what I wanted. The fact was I didn't feel good about it. Whoa! Whoa, 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 that, that, that hit deep there! That hit deep! Yeah, you're right. Really? Where's I didn't deny it? I think Torda could count my friends in one hand. I didn't think to be more friendly. I wasn't dissatisfied with the situation. Okay, I'll try. No, wait a minute. Isn't there some other way to do this? We're just asking out of the blue while they're practicing. Uh, I think he likes you. No, no way. May actually have been true. If more than half the fault was my attitude, I think the rest could be attributed to the fact that I am not the type that people like much. It wasn't just him. It was simply that the school was not accepting of students like me. Most of the students at the school were ambitious, always thinking about being su successful at music. Now that, that is the direction most of the teachers pushed you toward. There were only two kinds of students that didn't fit that mold. Those that had fallen off the rails and those who didn't need to worry because of their exceptional abilities. The former were looked down on while the latter were envied. I thought I was the former, but I tended to be regarded as the latter because of my ability to play the forte and play it well. It would be okay if it was just about most students being jealous. But within that jealousy was also a sense of awe. I, however, wasn't trying to use that to my advantage. I had already been told by Ms. Cordell and Torta that people thought I was difficult to get along with. In short, I had no interest in getting along with people. But as unsuitable as I was for the school, I didn't think that the school was unsuitable for me. Darn. Yeah, it's as you say, Torta. 
Why was Torla so intent on carrying out this exercise in futility, knowing me as well as she did? Um, she already knew. This was just for me. Okay. But I'm bored. It's not happening. Yes, I do. Yeah, I guess, maybe. Good work! Torta sat up from laying across the cafeteria table and pulled a cup close to herself. What should be okay? Oh, it looks so kawaii. Is that, uh, coffee or, uh, or tea? I don't know, it looks like coffee. Alright. Not yet, it's hot. Hey, see, I told you it was gonna be hot. See, I told you so. Oh, she looks so sad now. You're making me uncomfortable just watching you. It's not exactly cold here. You know you're bad with hot food and drink. Really? The drink must have cooled down as Torta brought it to her mouth again happily. Are you sure? Hold on, let's take a look at this. That, that is still steaming hot there. Steaming hot. Hmm? Are you sure? Mm, oh, never mind. You've liked that forever. Torta was happily drinking her drink of heated chocolate. Oh, it's hot chocolate. There's no marshmallows in there. It's really all... Uh... Chiao... Chiao colada calda was. I, I don't know what that is. Is that just hot chocolate? I think calda is like... Like scalding? I don't know. I, this, this is what my brain thinks. Maybe you couldn't even call it a drink. You did drink it, of course, but mostly the thick chocolate was eaten with a spoon. It's sweet and very filling. So I could never drink all of it. It does sound delicious. Maybe winter, but I'm not cold at all. Well, we're inside. As I spoke the words, I was reminded of my hometown, just like when reading one of Aerie's letters. The country was split in two by mountains. We were born in the north, and now we were living in the south. The climate was very different. It was warm here, even in the winter. Wait, you mean like literally, or you mean inside the building you're warm? Mixing your chocolate with a spoon, Torta showed no signs of losing her smile. Fine, but don't complain about it being hot anymore, okay? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, fine then. <laughs> well, it would be easier to get this talk over with while she was happy. I spoke to Torta again to talk about the day and to apologize. Thanks for today. Wait, I bought you the chocolate? Toward a toted her cup, obviously enjoying the last drop. Are you okay with just that? I mean, it helps that it's so cheap. Yeah. I thought this is how it would turn out. Maybe. Not at all. The truth was, I did think that. But I was wondering, why did you ask only male students? It's probably a little intrusive of me to worry about Torta like that. But I couldn't help noticing. I thought it would be easier to ask mainly friends for this kind of thing. I mean, if it's just that you have a lot of guy friends, that's okay. I said it nonchalantly, but if that were actually the case, I would actually not be that okay with it. Huh. Wait, she only asked male... singers? Why is that? I, w I would think you could ask just anybody, like all your friends. 
I'm confused. But we will find out in the next episode of Symphonic Rain. What, uh, why she chose to only find male, um, male singers. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Symphonic Rain where we got her chocolate. If you guys enjoyed it, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!